major changes um, in our lifestyles as a family as well as we realized that even though we thought we're eating healthy. I mean, Renee is a fantastic cook um, and, and we enjoy eating burakos, real good Afrikaans food. Um, and, and really, we, the food that she cooks is, is good food. We, we try not to, to eat stuff that's too fatty, too oily, too spicy or whatever. But as, as I've met more and more people over the last few years, I just realized that what we thought was healthy was actually so far from healthy, especially with the stuff we ate in between. And one of the people that I recently met um, is Tim Stockel. Um, and, and Tim has also been educating me and, and Renee over the last few years in what he's learned. And Tim, thanks a lot for joining us. And oh, thanks a lot for the wonderful support and friend you've been over the last few years. Um, among other, Tim's also a co-owner of Lifestem and Naked Health a few other companies as well, but Lifestem has been sponsoring me over the last few years and, and, and really played a big role in my health um, in the last few years. But Tim, maybe you could just um, tell us, where did you decide to, to look at the lifestyle of eating healthier and, and what made you get to a point of realizing that you have to change the way that you eat? Oh, France, many years ago, I had an accident that put me in hospital for nearly five years and I've had about 30 major ops. And interestingly enough, through that whole journey, um, I discovered that the food that I ate had a major impact on my recovery time from operations and that. And that just led to a passion to find um, good food that's still tasty and that has serious health benefits. Um, and it's basically been an ongoing journey. And, and the incredible thing is that we live in a, a time and age where information is just Google it. Um, but the downside of it also is that there's a lot of rubbish on, on the internet. And so it's just been a journey of, of self-discovering what works, what doesn't work. And Can I ask you something about that? Um, I, I'm a big Google fan as well. I, I, you know, it's, they've, they've revolutionized the way that we think, isn't it? Yeah, very um, definitely. But how do you filter what is rubbish and what's not? If you look at online, what, what's available with information? How did, how did you manage to do that? One of the biggest problems is that to do double blind studies and to get FDA approval and that type of stuff is exceptionally expensive. Um, but when researching, um, for instance, health ingredients and stuff, somewhere on the internet you will find out what the recommended daily dosage is. The problem with a lot of supplements on the market is you go and buy something in the shop and it says it's got all these ingredients in, but it's not at the recommended daily dosage. They put micrograms in just to say they've got it in. And it's been a journey along that path where you, we, we've tried to combine science, um, verifiable science, um, with the organic uh, GMO free movement. And it's not easy but the information is out there. Uh, it's helped that I've had friends at different universities and I'm able to use their databases on research that has happened on simple things like vitamin C and um, the types of, of vitamin C that you, it's, it's a simple thing, but there's so many different types and there's what is the correct dosage, etc. And then there, there, are, there are a lot of resources out there that, um, interesting enough, a lot of it comes from the former Soviet Union where they did a lot of research because Western drugs weren't that easily available to them. Mm. So it's just been sifting through that. Yeah. Food-wise, what, what has been some of the big lessons you've learned what to eat and what not to eat in terms of health? The, the biggest thing is that we don't eat f traditional food anymore. We eat the, the, uh, food defined, that comes... Define traditional food. Um, 50 years ago, our grandparents, the, the source from the farm to their kitchen was incredibly short. Today, it goes through up to 10 processes. The product that you get is a refined product that resembles sugar and opiates more than actual food. Um, and it's trying to shorten that journey again. For me, the biggest thing that I've discovered is the shorter I can bring that journey to home, the, the shorter the path from the farm to my home increases the health. And then obviously just to keep genetically modified organisms out of it. 
but the single biggest lesson is shortening the path from farm to kitchen. Okay, anything else in terms of um, what foods, um, for instance, let's talk about sugar. Um, the, one of the major things that I've learned to cut out out of my own diet is sugar. Um, for instance, coffee. I used to drink two, two <laughs> teaspoons of sugar in my coffee and I worked out eventually I was drinking five to seven cups of coffee a day. That's a lot of sugar. Um, and I stopped drinking sugar about five, six years ago already. I can't drink coffee with sugar anymore. It just tastes bad. You know, coffee without sugar is much nicer. But really the thing I'm trying to say is sugar is not good for you. What are the, some of the alternatives to, to sugar? I think one of the most exciting ones that are around at the moment is agave. Um, it's a, from the plant that tequila comes. They've refined a sugar out of it, which doesn't affect insulin. It doesn't cause an insulin trigger. It's, it's absorbed totally differently by your body. Um, and it's kept organic and natural as close as possible. Once again, it's a story of, of how long is the path. If you take cane juice, you can drink it. It doesn't have the same effect on your body as the sugar that you buy in a shop today because the sugar you buy has been stripped of all the enzymes and nutrients and everything else that give it a, a unique flavor and that actually protect the body. It doesn't have the same insulin spike or effect on your kidneys or anything else. So the problem is not in the sugar cane. The problem lies in the process from yeah. the sugar cane, raw sugar cane, to the normal white sugar that we buy. These days. That and the fact that... Uh, Anything you buy that's processed today has added sugar and added salt. So the amount that we're actually getting in, in hidden forms, is much higher than we ever used to get. You knew, as a, um, if I think back to the way I was brought up, sugar was a treat in our house. It was never added to everything that you buy. Today, it's added in everything that you buy. Go have a look at the ingredient list on any prepared food. There's added salt and there's added sugar. And the, the accumulation of that is just too much for our body. To, and that and the fact that it's so purified. Thanks a lot, Tim. Appreciate it. And we're going to be seeing a lot more of you. Thanks very much.